Hi everyone. We're going to go over how to create dependent drop down menus in Google Sheets. And this is just one video in a series of videos designed for sports scientists, strength coaches, and sport coaches for using Google Sheets in a simple yet effective manner to get the most out of the information that they're collecting. And I should mention that we are going to use the unique function and the filter function in this video to get the information that we're looking for and to create these lists. And I have videos on those topics. If you have not viewed those already, that's where I go into a little bit more depth on those functions. So if you missed something here, check those out. Now on the left hand side, we have dates, athlete names, the athlete's position, the sport that they play, and then some metric about them, which is in this case is the rating of perceived exertion or rating of exercise intensity on a scale of 1 to 10. And notice we have dates listed multiple times, athletes listed multiple times, and that's great. We have a lot of data on these athletes. Now what if we wanted to, I mean there's a lot of athletes, and if you're dealing with multiple sports or multiple positions and many athletes, you may want to filter down an athlete list by the sport or the position or both. So what we're going to do is we're first going to set up how to do this drop down list, just one. And the first way to do it, or the easiest way to do it, is to use a function called unique to get a unique list of something. You don't have to do it this way. In fact, you can actually create a drop down list without this unique list, but this unique list will come in handy for the dependent drop down. So we're going to type in equals unique, open parenthesis. And all it needs is a range. Right now we're getting a unique sport. So we want to get all the sports in our data set. And I'm going to select here. I'm going to hold down Control Shift and click the down arrow. And that brings me to the last cell in my data set. And I'm going to close the parenthesis and click Enter. And all I've done is I've just selected my entire data set, the sport column, column D. And these are the sports that are contained in our data set. And if we scroll through, we'll see we got basketball players, hockey players, and football players. Now, let's get a, do the exact same thing, but get a unique list of the positions that we have. This is not relevant for right now, but we'll use it in a little bit. So we'll go equals, unique, open parenthesis, and this time I'll select the range. So I'll click on C1. And I'll scroll all the way to the bottom of our data set, hold down shift, and click the last cell in our list. And I will close the parenthesis and click enter. And now this is a unique list of our positions. And remember, these positions are coming from multiple sports. Now, how do we create a drop down menu? Well, this is a very, very easy thing to do. Let's say we want our drop down menu to be in this cell right here, K2. All we have to do is when we have that cell selected is go to data, data validation, and it's already selected for us, list from a range. Now what range do we want to select from for our list? We'll click on this little guy here where it says select data range, or you could type it in manually, but let's select. And we want this range here. Or we may want a longer range in case we end up having more sports added to our data set. And this is an important thing to note. I didn't do it in this video, but typically if you want a unique list of something, I advise going way beyond um, the current data set so that when you add more information, it'll accommodate for that. As our list is currently set, well, first I, I just saved the, the drop down menu, and here it is right here in this cell. But as our list is currently set, so we did a unique function using this range. And if we were to add another sport to the bottom of this range, like we added more data down here, and we said the sport was um, gymnastics, then if we go back up here, our unique function will not accommodate for that. But if we go back into this function and we increase this range, from D161 to D1000 and click enter. Now we have accommodated for that and it'll show up in our list. So this is an important step to take when you are creating these lists. Just be weary that 
you'll want to accommodate for as many items as, as you'll potentially have in the data set. But now I removed gymnastics and we're back to our three sports and we have our drop down menu of sports. That's pretty cool. And now what we want is we want to be able to select an athlete based on the sport that they play. And to do that, we need to generate a list of athletes based on what we pick here. Oops, let me undo that. Based on what we pick here. So I'm gonna insert another column in here. Oh, we're getting a little bit tight. Maybe I'll change, no, I won't change the column list now. But let's call this athletes. And we don't want a unique list of athletes. We just want a unique list of athletes for whoever play this sport that we have in our dropdown. And the way that we can do this is we can go equals unique, just like we did before. But instead of just selecting a range, we're going to also use a function called filter. I'm going to type in filter here, open the parentheses, and what filter asks for first is a range. Now, what we can do is we can just select all of our athletes here. And again, remember, you might want to select further down than this, but I've selected that range, comma, and now what filter asks for is a condition. So I get it, you want to return everything in that range, but now we get to decide, well, do we want to exclude things or do we want to keep everything? And we want to exclude things. We, we want the condition to be, we want a list of athletes only when the sport, which is in column D, so when the sport in this range, the same range, is equal to, and let me go back up here, is equal to the sport that we select right here. And I'm going to close the parentheses and click enter. And now we have a list of athletes with a sport that is equal to the sport that we select here. And if we select a different sport, the athletes will change. And the last step here is just to create another drop-down menu. So we can go to, click on this cell, this is where we want the drop-down menu to be. Go to Data, Data Validation, List from a Range, and let's select our range, and let's select all the potential athletes that could be there. And Google Sheets is nice because it doesn't count blanks. And we can go OK and save. And now we should have a list of our athletes to pick from within that sport. Now, this is kind of useless. I'm actually going to I'm trying to think about ways to save space. I'm going to resize these columns if I can to maybe 80 just so we have a little bit of room here. And this is nice, we get to select an athlete, but we want information to be returned about that athlete. Let's say that we want this, and we want the date. We're gonna use the function filter to get that information, which is being driven from our drop-down menus. Go equals filter, and we just use this function, open the parentheses, but now instead of selecting a range, so there are a couple of things that you could do here. Whenever you see a range, you could select a range of cells, but if we select all these cells, then one, two, three, four, five columns will be returned. So we're going to do this in two different ways. The first is I'm going to select everything in my range that I want, which is all of these cells, all of these columns, and then go comma because we can choose what we keep here. Now we only want the information to show up for when the athlete's name, which I'm selecting in column B and dragging it down, and there's there are faster ways to do this, I'm just dragging it down because not everyone might have all the shortcuts. When that equals the player's name that we select, and I'm going to close the parentheses and click enter. And now, like I said, we get all the data that we selected in that range. But what if we wanted to select a sport, then select an athlete, and then just have the dates and their RPE, or rating of procedure exertion, show up? Well, we can do that. Instead of selecting this entire range here in the filter function, we can, do, we can use curly brackets. And what this allows us to do is to, 
is to select multiple columns that are not side by side to one another or not adjacent to one another. So I'm going to do a curly open square bracket. And I know that our range is B1 or it goes down to 161. So I'm just going to type in now A1 colon A161. And now what that means is I want to bring back everything that's between A1 and A161, comma, and also I'll go E1 colon to E161. So like I said, I'm only going to bring back the date and the RPE, and we'll close the curly square bracket and leave everything else the same. So we want to bring back the date and the RPE for when the athlete's name is equal to the name that we select in our dropdown over here. And we'll click enter. So now we have exactly that. And if we pick a different athlete, the numbers will change. So if we choose another athlete, again, the numbers will change. I'm not sure if you can see that because it happens quickly. And if we pick a different sport, the athletes in our list will change and this data is driven off the athlete so the numbers will change too. Now what if we wanted to add another layer to this? We not only wanted to segregate by sport but we wanted the drop this athlete drop down menu to be based on their position as well. So that's the reason why I created this position list even though we're gonna have to make a slight edit to it. So to do this, I don't want to, I'm going to drag all of this down one spot. Nothing will change. And I'm going to type in position right here. Because we're going to create a drop down for the position too. Once we select our sport, then we'll select the position, then we'll select the athlete. And you could bypass the position if you wanted to uh, sometimes. So in this formula, here to get our position we did unique and this brings in positions regardless of sport but what we can do is we can apply something very similar to what we did right here with the athletes and say we want a unique position but we want to filter it to the sport that we select and that's exactly what we're going to do and then we're going to change the athletes one because we're kind of going one step further so we'll add in filter so we want this range, we want the positions, comma, when the sport, which in this case would be D2 to D161, D2 to D161, is equal to the sport that we select here. And let's close that off and click enter. And now notice the position list is only two items and not the original however many items there were because we have basketball selected and we only have small forwards and centers in our basketball group and if we select a different sport like hockey and now this is going to get all, all messed up but that's okay now we just get forward and defenseman because all we have are forwards and defensemen in our, for our hockey athletes now we just have to change this athletes filter a little bit and what we can do, we can do two, one of two things. The easiest thing to do, I think, since we already have the sport figured out, right, where this athlete is based on the sport that's selected, we can do comma after that condition and add in another one and say, not only do we want the athlete only when the sport is equal to whatever we select here, but we also want the athlete only when the position, which is column C, you can't see it, but it's column C, when C2 to C161, notice all these ranges are the same. When that is equal to whatever is in here. And let's click enter. And as you might expect, we have an error. The reason why there's an error here is because we don't have any position in here. But if I type in the word forward, because we have hockey selected, and click enter, now my list of ice hockey forwards show up. The last thing to do here is to make this a drop-down menu, and we know how to do that. We go to data, 
data validation, and we can select from a range, and we will select all the positions that there could be. Click OK and click Save. And now if we select our defenseman, the list will change, and then this list will change to just our defenseman. And now we have a multi-tiered dependent dropdown where first we select a sport, let's say we select football, then we select a position, and we have three positions in our football group. Maybe we want to look at the quarterbacks. There are our quarterbacks, and our athlete list filters down to be those quarterbacks. And when we select them, we have data for them. So that's how you create a dependent dropdown. Normally, I would suggest doing the lists of things. You see how we have lists here? I would do that on a separate page than what you do all of this stuff on, the actual selecting. So typically I'll have a, a tab called lists or something like that where I keep my lists that I then refer to on my visualization page when I create these dropdowns and coincide the data with it. So that's it for this video. I hope that it was helpful. Uh, if it was, please give it a like. If you find the content that I'm providing helpful in general, subscribe so that YouTube knows that it's beneficial stuff and then more people will have access to it, more people will see it, and it'll help more people in general. And that's kind of the goal here. We all want to help each other be successful. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.